was the founding staff member of the Industrial Hemp Research Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit which assisted in the development of the public-private model that has played a key role in shaping the U.S. hemp industry so far. Tom joined the Vija team in November of 2017 and manages all aspects of the operations ranging from licensing, procurement, and distribution of certified seed across Europe, the Americas, and Australia. Apart from his responsibilities to Bija Hemp and its parent company, International Hemp Solutions, Tom serves on the steering committee of the Colorado Hemp Roundtable and the Colorado Research Authority Working Group and regularly advises on legislative and related regulatory actions across the country. And with that, I will give you Tom and the state of seed. Thanks, Colleen. Oh, to the perfect, thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Colleen, for the wonderful intro, and as, as always, thanks for putting such a wonderful conference together. I've been attending the HIA conference for the last four years, and I'm always impressed with both the growth in attendance and the scope uh, of, the, of the conference. And hang on just a, just a second. So today we're going to be talking about the state of seed, where the U.S. seed market is at, what is going well, what needs to be addressed, and ultimately wh where uh, we'll find ourselves following the adoption of the Farm Bill. Uh, I'm going to take some liberties today to assume that the hemp portions of the Farm Bill are staying as is, uh, given some comments made earlier today, as well as some information uh, available in D.C. So with that said, Let's uh, jump right into it. So first off, what is certified seed? Uh, in the United States, the Association of Seed Certifying Associations assures that seeds that are provided for uh, seed labeling maintain genetic purity and varietal identity and ultimately provide a level of confidence to various actors across the agricultural supply chain. The requirements include land management, planting stock, field inspections, proper seed labeling, and laboratory accreditations for participating entities. Uh, each state, with the, exception of several or with the exception of two or three regions within the United States, has its own vested member program. And I like to think of this, for those folks who grow other commodities other than hemp, if you buy 110-day corn, you know what you're getting. And that is ultimately the type of satisfaction that we're trying to deliver to farmers, as well as the operators that purchase their resulting crops. And as this industry continues to grow, this is an essential service required for the industry to maintain its existing growth metrics as well as satisfy new customer options. And when, when we go out there as a, as a company, we are looking at can we offer the right seed for the right purpose in that particular region, whether it be a state, uh, subsection within the United States or, or ultimately across the world. We are uh, involved in multiple opportunities beyond the United States and I'll get to that in just a minute. But uh, for the moment what I'd like to do is, is cover what we do as a company. So we offer OEECD and ISTA validated seed uh, for sale direct to uh, licensed seed brokers as well as seed distributors. We uh, also service that through domestic production or propagation, as some people refer to it, as well as direct import from countries abroad. And last but certainly not least, we're heavily involved in research and development so that the series of seeds that we continue to offer the market are improved over time. Uh, just a, a quick snapshot, today's, conf or today's presentation focuses on domestic issues, but I do want to, for those in the audience that are interested in this, we do have a global reach. Uh, most of our seeds presently are based within the OECD, but this provides a quick snapshot of some of the activities uh, that me and my colleagues are involved in. Uh, myself, as well as the CEO, Tim Gordon, are involved in the Colorado Hemp Research Authority Working Group, which is a means to uh, culminate funding to support the public-private partnership model that I began uh, or, or focused on earlier in my career with the Industrial Hemp Research Foundation. We're pursuing a processing grant uh, through the New York State Empire State Development Program. Uh, we're also looking closely at which farm bill programs under NEFA are most applicable. And last uh, but certainly not least, we're very excited uh, 
for the likely convergence of the AOSCA National Review Board following the adoption of the 18 Farm Bill. Uh, there's some other items up there. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but if you'd like to discuss that further after today's presentation, I'd be happy to do so. So it's, it's been an interesting four years, uh, but with all that said, uh, we have persevered, and I don't think that the, the hemp industry has seen uh, such opportunity uh, since its beginning. We, you know, just a quick snapshot, thanks to our friends at the National State Council of Legislatures and the current state of regulatory programs. Obviously, those are in different stages of development, but for our interest, what we look at most closely is which states have an active listing for a certified seed program, which ones have the option to produce one, and in many programs, it's completely absent, which is something that will drastically change in the 18 month period following the adoption of the Farm Bill. And we'll get into the reasons behind that in just a moment. But one thing that I would like to point out here is that you've got kind of a strange mix of states that have certified seed. California, you know, very conservative by all stretches of the imagination. Oregon has a certified seed program listed, but not a mechanism to enforce. Uh, Colorado, which we're based out of, has the largest certified seed hold uh, following this year's harvest. Uh, in conjunction with the uh, folks like John over there, we, we've certainly done a good job in helping boost that messaging uh, and are excited, as well as the state of Maine. A lot of people don't know that they do have an up and running program. Uh, hasn't been widely adopted because people are still chasing after the horticulture style. But I anticipate that we'll see between four and five new programs come online next year so that we can focus on the transition of localizing seed production rather than being beholden to uh, the the concerns surrounding imports. Uh, with that said, um, oh, excuse me, the other piece to reference here is, according to our analysis, we're looking at between a 12 and 15 percent hot rate or crops that exceed the 0 0.3 limit nationally, and we expect that to rise this year given just the sheer scale at which we've seen growth from 16 to 17 and beyond. Uh, we'll probably get the final numbers right at the end of the year, if not at the turn of the calendar. So that's, it's important to recognize because those are tremendous failures. If anything is to be true about the value of these products, you're talking about losing 15% of the inventory that could have gone into processing. That's a huge problem that needs to be addressed. And states like Colorado, uh, Minnesota, and elsewhere are leading the way in this development, but ultimately, the interests of certified seed doesn't necessarily align with the interests of the existing processing network. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into some of those reasons in a moment. But ultimately, what, what I would like to leave today's conversation with is folks having a better understanding of what the federal oversight of hemp activities will, how that will be received by the industry. Um, and ultimately, the, the company was formed so that we can help farmers and as well as downstream providers uh, have the satisfaction to continue scaling their businesses and servicing their customers. Um, so what's gone well? It can, uh, what's, what needs to be addressed? And it really can be boiled down to these three items. Import and export controls of certified seeds has always been a problem. Uh, the first time our, our company went out there to service import, we sustained a $50,000 penalty because we didn't have a piece of paper that had been lost from the manifest and it took us several days to acquire it. And the other side of it, of course, is how state departments of ag do not readily uh, utilize their import process the same way. For instance, uh, you know, like Jonathan mentioned earlier, the state of Kentucky. That is a per direct purchaser option, which I think is the best model to date. While in some states you have to culminate a supporting structure likely involving a university of higher education that can result in challenging issues from a business perspective. And beyond that, when you're dealing with federal authorities, whether it's the DEA or Customs and Border, Sometimes they literally think you're just trying to import marijuana seeds uh, to start off and the, the challenge to educate someone whose job it is to properly supervise this activity is challenged to say the least. But I think ultimately one of the best things that the Farm Bill prescribes to us is the ability to remove that obligation from the DEA and place it more readily in the hands of the USDA. Uh, we all know that interstate transport is a huge issue with seed, seedlings, genetics, et cetera. But the, the piece that I think a lot of people miss 
is that it's not the responsibility of the state and other commodities to supervise that transport. That is really left up to federal authorities that are, are clearly lacking the guidance to enforce or, or even regulate the system. And most importantly, what I think some of us miss in our business activities is that the control of seed is a highly regulated industry, not because the, or yes, they're looking out for farmers, but the other piece is the microbe content in your seedlings, in your seed stock, et cetera, presents tremendous biosecurity risks. And I hope that everyone can take a moment as they're planning for next year to think about the implications of environmental stress that buying clones from a, an area so far away may, may impede on your business. And then last, but certainly not least, the, the biggest issue, I think unequivocally, is the inability to offer plant protections for American-based companies that want to protect their varieties and, and use them for wide-scale use. You can't go and get a PBR, or, excuse me, a plant reader, breeder's right registration in the United States right now. You essentially have to circumvent the system, work outside, and bring those varietals back in, even if they are unique uh, to your own company. And I, I think that's easily the biggest issue everyone is facing right now is, is feeling comfortable with that transfer from a regulatory standpoint. But that's, that's the bad news. Let's move on to what's, how we fix it. Uh, so the farm bill lot is, is resting on it, and I, I'm feeling more hopeful than most about the adoption of, of the hemp language, specifically because American farmers need crop diversification. For that simple fact, I really think that we're going to see some significant improvements in the federal oversight of our, our plans, and, and you know we're going to win and we're going to lose some options. So let's cover some of the fun stuff. I think everyone's looking at the state management plan provisions and how that comes into effect, but ultimately there's likely to be an 18-month window for implementation following the adoption of the Farm Bill uh, from the easier pieces to move over right away, while well, things like 508 crop insurance uh, and or NEFA program specialty will really be quite the battle. But with that comes the obligations of the Federal Seed Act, uh, which is the overreaching piece of policy that if you don't know about it and you're growing hemp, I suggest you check it out as soon as possible because it really sets the standard by which seed, both from a regulatory and a production standpoint, is evaluated. And it also ensures that more traditional actors in the space will show a greater interest in purchasing your resulting crops, whether that be in the fiber and grain market specifically, but who knows, maybe they'll uh, get into the CBD market too. I, I wouldn't uh, want to venture a guess. But one of the things that we're most excited about as a company is AOSCA's stance following the Farm Bill and convening the National Review Board, which sets the standard by which seed is evaluated. Right now, every state can self-affirm the guideline, but they have not, or as of yet, not actually enforced the ability for those to be recognized on a state, regional, or national basis. Uh, I think everyone's excited about uh, banking solutions and the op option to take on an extended service. Uh, we're, we're certainly excited to see that as well. Uh, but most importantly, we've seen tremendous loss on account of, of crop failure whether that be an act of God or otherwise, and the ability to access federal programs under the 508H program is the most likely first successful federally reinsured crop program uh, that we can look at, and I, I can say that uh, the, the company that I work for is surely excited about that as well. But what you're missing on the map, and something that I wanted to point out, is that soon enough, all of us as operators will have the advantage of being able to access your local AOSCA member for the benefit of validating seed as that process takes up speed. Uh, really, an, I, I couldn't uh, compliment the folks at vested member programs across the country that I have access to. They're excited and they understand the implications that this will have both for their agencies as well as the operators who are calling them saying, I don't know how to qualify this seed and I'm just not going to buy it. Yeah, unless I can get, I can have this sort of assurance. And, and we're really excited to give them that opportunity at a national level and also define probably one of the more interesting pieces about hemp at the moment is pollen transfer. And AOSCA is in a unique position to help address that concern about the, the issuance of cross-pollination and the danger that it could provide uh, to your farm or, or investment otherwise. And just a, a quick comment, I'm not an attorney, uh, but I always like to point this out, what's gonna happen with THC and hemp when they say things like, except for the THC and hemp in the definition? 
Is that a control mechanism? Uh, or is it a conversion? What's going to be the appropriate method of disposal and recording uh, is certainly an interesting topic, topic as well. All right, so going to operations for a sec, uh, we are in the midst of, of announcing our seed inventory for this coming year. Uh, we're also looking for propagation service contract opportunities where we align directly with farmers and make opportunities for buybacks and or financing to support the production of localized seed in particular jurisdictions that we're targeting. Uh, those include the state of Oregon, California, Colorado, Montana, Minnesota, and New York for this coming year. And if you're an operator who is kind of wondering how can I get into this industry and you have experience in certified seed production. Uh, in particular, we would be more than interested in speaking with you after uh, today's presentation or beyond. Uh, we're likely to close those service contracts before the end of the month and move on to servicing our uh, shipping and handling needs for next year. And with all that said, uh, the, the other part of course is how we can network with universities. Uh, I'm coming from my background, I really think that the advancement of the hemp industry rests on the ability for those to cooperate with their local institutions of higher education in a limited capacity that's appropriate for your needs, uh, whether it be basic agronomic work, applied side research to drive your business development, and or just the validation that any, all of us are really searching for uh, when it comes to hemp-based products. Uh, but for 2018, I'm happy to announce that we have uh, the equivalency of 12,000 acres of seed to sell. Uh, we have hosted acclimation trials in all the states that we're willing to sell that in and are happy to provide that as part of a, 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 a sales placement opportunity when appropriate. Right now, I, I will admit we're at 90% import, but our goal is to drop that uh, to 80% for next year and beyond and beyond. It really just comes to how quickly we can build efficiencies where we can offer satisfactory certified seed in your local jurisdiction. And also spreading a, a greater diversity of varietals uh, is also a key piece. Uh, we're looking to partner with land grant institutions that have an affiliation with their AOSCA vested member and or uh, that are pursuing uh, NEFA based material uh, or material support requests. Uh, beyond that, we're looking at targeting national research centers and junior colleges and community colleges that have a vocational basis so that people actually feel comfortable in how they're growing this stuff long term. Uh, because if you run into issues on the farm, we all know how that goes. Um, and last but certainly not least, uh, one of the things that we're very interested in as well is the ability to aggregate with licensed brokers and seed distributors uh, within states. They have their ability to integrate far more readily with average or your, your common producer than I ever would or, or the company would. And that's really where I think the future of hemp is going, is being able to call your local seed distributor and say, this is the type of seed I'm looking for and set it in my lot with the rest of the stuff that I'm gonna pick up next week. The, the days of trying to one-off seed sales uh, are quickly coming to an end, uh, for better or for worse, and, and that's something that, as a company, we're excited to see because it helps demonstrate the normalcy that we're experiencing. And then I, I did want to take a, a quick moment to talk about heritage seeds and genetic diversity. Uh, Bija Hemp is committed to maintaining genetic diversity, but we also recognize the inherent danger that heritage seed provides to the market. If you sell that seed and that guy saves seed and he sells it to his neighbor down the street, what are the chances of it going hot and that person loses their first crop or in some cases loses the farm? And we unequivocally are for the maintenance of heritage seed programs uh, before joining the Bija team or before I got into the hemp industry. In fact, I was a major advocate in DC for the maintenance of heritage seed programs, uh, but it, it's, the hemp industry's opportunity to set the standard for greater agribusiness more readily than, let's say, you know, our friends in the corn industry might say at the moment. Um, so with that said, the, the other thing for those qualified parties, we are interested in propagation service agreements where you are the recipient. So to say we are hedging our stock, but if we, if you're a large scale operator who's looking for seed placement in a meaningful way, uh, please come uh, reach out to me or one of my colleagues to discuss uh, propagation service agreements uh, uh, from here on out. 
Uh, industry trends and advice, uh, and to be clear, I'm gonna take Q&A, uh, so I'm just kind of laying the, the groundwork. Uh, most of the time I'd like to take uh, questions from the audience if possible, because I tend to get a lot of questions after this slide. Uh, my best advice for anyone is be judicious about the adjective in front of certified. There's a lot of different strange adjectives being thrown out there about who is certifying what. Uh, whether it, uh, not necessarily in seed, but particularly in organic certification, uh, what portion of your process is certified is also critical uh, so that you're not uh, being misrepresented or you're not misrepresenting to someone else. Uh, know your seed providers. I think all of us know there are absolute horror stories of seed this year. Uh, and be prepared to ask the tough questions that can generally be set to acclimation. How closely have you tested this varietal to my farm or farms, and if you got, you know, if you're, if you have the luxury of having more than one, uh, quality assurance. What sort of conditioning and/or secondary analysis is being performed? Uh, if you don't have clean seed, you can have a whole host of issues from planting all the way uh, through microbial content ruining the resulting crop. And then uh, being able to stick on delivery schedules, because if you're not delivering and planting on time, everyone else down the supply stream, including all those great harvesters out there, uh, really have a tough time staying on schedule. And I think the other part is if anyone tells you they pulled those feminized seed early because they wanted to fill your order, send it back. So just send it back as quickly as you can possibly do. Uh, and then one of the big things, I, I'm a big policy nerd, I'll admit it, is learn the Federal Seed Act or find someone who's qualified to tell you about the implications on your business with the Federal Seed Act because the days of trying to transplant clones from Oregon and move them to Tennessee, while that doesn't sound all that bad, are, are likely to, to end following the adoption of the Farm Bill. Uh, for better or for worse, you, you can take it uh, as it is. But the, the real benefit, of course, is that that's gonna drive market confidence in the right direction long term, and I'm excited to see that, to say the least. The other portion of the Seed Act, of course, is being prepared to recognize your unique variety. How many people think they have a unique variety in here? I don't need a show of hands, I'm just, I'm just wondering. But, but how prepared are you to recognize that in a, in a legal setting is a really good question. Uh, you look like you're ready, congrats. Yeah. Oh, congrats, another OECD registration, that's great. And then, you know, something that I always uh, think about is, is try to maintain the enthusiasm that got you in and has gotten you this far, because uh, it's certainly not easy out there, uh, to say the least. And with that, I, I always like to say the race is on, and from here, I'll take questions about seed. Seed, 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 let's, let's get into it. Thank you for your time. Um, Ma'am, go ahead. You know what, so, sorry, that, that's a great question, and we do the gambit. Uh, we produce seeds for uh, CBD content, but not, you know, this year we're rolling out one that's at 7%, uh, and by, for, when we don't do horticulture-style production, we, I'm sorry? Um, oh, well, yeah, I'm happy to repeat the question. Um, uh, this woman is asking about uh, what kinds of seeds we offer. Uh, so we offer the gambit. They're all uh, OEECD or ice to recognize varieties ranging from uh, the grain style of cannabinoid production where you're row cropping, uh, separating seed from flower, not the Christmas trees. That, that's, a, that's a wild game to say the least. Uh, we also do uh, grain and, and fiber, or true grain, as I sometimes like to call it, when you're just going for the seeds. And as part of our catalog this year, we've actually licensed uh, the world's highest seed-producing variety, which we're excited about. It's called Hanola. It's a European or continental European-based variety that's being used in a series of industrial applications. It's fine for, for human consumption, but it produces at 3,300 pounds per acre, which according to our analysis lets us break through this, the human consumption gap, as I like to say, and focus more readily on the production of advanced plastics and biofuels. And there's a great article in Hemp Today about an associate of ours, the Institute of Natural Fibers and Medicinal Plants, working with Lotus, which is the Polish-owned uh, biogas company, on a development project that we're associated with. And then we also do fiber and, and herd, too. I got some mean herd varieties. Uh, 
you know, that, that grow as high as you need them to. Uh, but that also comes down to one of the questions that we always ask in return is, what's the best for the processing options that you have within a certain distance of your, your operation? Uh, thanks. Thanks for the question. If uh, I just want to cut in oh. here for a moment. If there are questions, stand up for us so that we know to bring the mic to you. Um, that would help us make sure that we're getting it all recorded. Thank you. So do you, do you help smaller farmers, uh, you know, the, the guys that are just starting out? The, uh, and the reason why I'm asking is I often get calls from farmers starting out, and I'll get questions like, okay, I need a, a do you have any contacts, Angela, for, you know, s sources for seed? Um, mm -hmm. I need something that's going to, to withstand Missouri humidity. Yeah, sure, and, and we, we do service small operators. My response to that is we service small operators who call at the right time of the year. If you're a 40-acre hemp farmer trying to do something in the middle of May, I'm just going to tell you no. I wouldn't even waste your time because I just think it, it's doomed to fail. But if you're calling me October, November, and you say I'm getting into my my management plan. I want to see what seeds are available. Uh, that's, you know, we're happy to service anyone. We don't uh, discriminate against the size of the farm. And ultimately, we're more interested in diversifying our seed lot for placement than servicing, you know, um, just whoever comes across the table. Yeah, for CBD content, you mentioned that maybe 7% might be good. Uh, what, how high is the industry going right now, and how high do you think the ceiling is? And what else are you looking at getting in your products other than CBD? Sure. Uh, in terms of the cannabinoid side. Sure, and, and to be clear, what, what I was saying for this year on the registered, it, you know, we kind of look at it both of the registered seed class and what's scaled. And right now, you, you're sitting around 7% is the max you'll find on the list. But there are some incredible breeding programs ongoing, uh, both within the US and conjunction with some Canadian groups, as well as uh, Europe and South America that are working on boosting the content. I've seen some initial panels that are between 12 and 15. Uh, but at the end of the day, I would also argue that you're better off focusing on maximizing your retention rather than trying to just boost the CBD content to get yourself out of a rut. But beyond that, uh, we're interested in pr providing a series of profiles that go beyond CBD. Uh, we have access to some CBN and, and other genetics that are of interest. We just haven't scaled them to the point that they're in our inventory for sale yet. Uh, maybe a series of them might be placed in university projects because we tend to like to put small amounts of seed to validate the use case out there first before we go to scale. Uh, but beyond that, I think that there's a real interesting market for terpenes uh, or terpenes that are unique to cannabis because you can avoid all the headaches that we hear about all the time on this stage and go to a company that just wants to make something smell good and just and, and be happy with that. I mean, generally, I, I saw a contract recently uh, for a group who was selling at $250 a milliliter for a very nice complex, and that's certainly not, uh, you know, uh, n nothing to blink about, I would say. Hi, I'm uh, Karen Dixon with Scabby Seeds, and I want to thank you for the presentation today and, and laying out some of the basic principles, including read the Federal Seed Act. And I don't expect you to have an answer to this question, but I at least think we should start thinking about um, our farmers and our growers. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the larger ag space, mm -hmm. we all know that uh, the, the seed companies tend to ultimately do very, very well. Mm -hmm. And all of that uh, wealth seems to be concentrated in just a few. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if, given what this uh, industry, this emerging industry represents, if we should be thinking about how we can ensure that when um, farmer growers enter into propagation agreements with us, we ensure that they're not left behind and that, you know, rising tides rise, rise, all, sh rise all ships. And let's make sure that. Um, we try to change the face of ag in, yes. in, this, in this space, perhaps as an example to the rest of the companies out there. You know, I, I couldn't agree with you more. On a, on a personal level, I've been a farm advocate 
my entire professional career uh, and really got into hemp because I saw it as a golden opportunity to represent what crop diversification can do for farmers. With that said, as a company, uh, Bija is a wholly owned subsidiary of a company called International Hemp Solutions, uh, PBC. Uh, we are in the process of, cons of when to file for our B Corp status, uh, and that's really the backbone of our company is how we can offer the essential services that drive the, the, the growth of the industry at large. Uh, with, with a commitment uh, to farmers in particular. And I am excited that we'll have uh, the chance to you know, bring that to, to the mass at, at a series of events that we're doing over the next couple of months in the greater ag space, uh, if you will. And, th and thank you for your comment. I appreciate it very much. Anything else? Burning questions about seed? Everyone's got them in around May. Uh. <laughs> you mentioned how important it was to distinguish between the certification type. Mm -hmm. And you have a slide with state certifications. Yes. Can you just clarify for us <clears throat> that those aren't AOSCA certified backed certifications? Those are independent states designing their own certification No, process? no, no. They, okay, they are vested question. member programs of AOSCA. So with the exception of Pennsylvania and there's another weird one, but Pennsylvania and uh, and Maryland share a program, but uh, there are there are 47 vested members of AOSCA for the production of registered and certified seed. Uh, the, you know, most of them are the State Seed Improvement Association because you know they they're not all that exciting with naming these things. Uh, and I think you know Kentucky's Kentucky Seed Improvement uh, were Colorado Seed Growers Association, but they were all members of the association or the. Uh, AOSCA, which are all members of the international group ISTA under the UPOV agreements. We don't need to get into that. I'm trying to avoid not getting into the weeds. <laughs> oh, I, I also want to mention that I think it was critically important that um, you brought folks' attention to be careful with the word certified, lowercase, or what's coming before mm -hmm. it. And I was having a conversation um, yesterday and learned about uh, somebody that spent $86,000 for four pounds of seed. They were pricing them per seed. And it's like, you know, our, our varieties, which are certified on every list, go for 15 to 20 bucks at this point, a pound. Mm -hmm. So yep. 80 bucks versus 86,000, there's a difference. And, you know, more to the point, um, be, be, be aware, I mean, I, I go online from time to time to entertain myself and look up, where can I get certified industrial hemp seed? And, you know, I could get 400 bucks per seed and I assure you, that's not how it is. And it's really important to understand, make contact with your uh, Department of Ag, reach out to the seed improvement of folks, the crop, the crop improvement folks, and make sure that what you are buying is quality seed. Absolutely, and I, I would also say that what some people don't know is that there's a series within AOSCA based out of a, an office in Minneapolis that you can call and if anyone, they'll, they'll flag a site, someone who, who's claiming to be certified, and try to take it uh, from the top, you might say. A uh, really great resource, um, especially as this industry moves closer and closer to what I, I like to call con conventional lag. Not, not conventional out the back side, just, just more conventional than it is now. Um, any other questions? Take for the crowd. Well, thanks everyone for your attention today. And if you have any questions, feel free to come uh, find me after today's presentation. Thank you.